Hello, this is Let's Talk About Myths, baby, and I am your host, Liv, here with, yes, you read that right, a bonus episode. Yeah, I am here on a random Saturday with you guys just because, frankly, I just desperately wanted to do this episode, but I realized it was kind of beyond the scope of what I normally do in conversation episodes and maybe a bit excessive because you all know how much I talk about this all of the time. Um, So instead, we've made it a very fun and very ridiculous bonus episode because, yes, today I sat down with Emily Edwards of the Fuck Boys of Literature podcast. You all probably know her. I have been on her show to talk about Jane Eyre and the picture of Dorian Gray. Um, it's so much fun. So you can check out those episodes on the Fuck Boys of Literature feed if you are interested. They're such a thrill. But in general, Emily's been on the show too to talk about Cersei, amongst other things. It's just a good excuse to get to talk to her, frankly. And Theseus. Yes, Theseus, because Theseus is just asking to be examined for the fuckboy that he is. And so when I came up with this idea to talk to Emily and she was into it, honestly, like, just got more and more excited. And this was so much fun. Basically, we just tear Theseus apart bit by bit, detail by detail in what was a very fun and ridiculous and hilarious conversation about, honestly, the world's worst hero. How he is called a hero is beyond me. I mean, the dude was such an asshole. And Emily and I get into it. So I hope you enjoy and make sure you check out the back episodes of Fuck Boys of Literature available wherever you get your podcasts. New episodes are available for a dollar a month over on Emily's Patreon, which I totally respect. Honestly, it takes so much work to get into podcasts. And if you're not making any money off of it, sometimes it can feel not worth it. And so Emily has made the very cool and brave decision to make it so that All of her podcasts are available, all new ones rather, are available for just as little as a dollar a month. And make sure you listen to Fuckboys of Literature. It is a very fun podcast. And definitely in keeping with fans of my own show. This is The Least Heroic Hero, a bonus conversation on the fuckboy that is Theseus with Emily Edwards. So, I am here today with Emily Edwards of Fuck Boys of Literature. Thank you so much, Emily. This is going to be very fun. (laughs) I am so excited to talk about Theseus with you because I am, I'm not a predominantly mythology focused uh, podcast. I was familiar with the triumphs of Theseus and now I get to experience the lows of Theseus (laughs) and oh my God, I was not expecting this. Yeah, and that's exactly why I asked you. So basically what I wanted out of this episode is like, not a mythological discussion yeah because I have those all the time and you have to be nuanced and all these different things that you know are not as fun with Theseus because he's just a huge enormous shit (laughs) and I really was so thrilled to be able to ask somebody to come on the show and just talk about what a shit he is this is probably going to be a bonus episode because it is not going to be explicitly (laughs) mythological it's just going to be like nonsense hating on the world's <laughs> shittiest hero so is it i am nonsense? thrilled it is not nonsense that's true that's true it's very valid and as much as like various mythological talk you know does require some nuance and stuff the thing about theseus is that like he's objectively bad yeah he's not like zeus bad where i mean i think zeus is pretty objectively bad too but at the same time there's like there's some 
there's a little more to it. Right. You know? And I don't think Zeus always thought he was being bad, but I honestly don't think that Theseus could even justify it to himself, the stuff he did. Because Theseus was like, Theseus, excuse me. Theseus, I mean, you're not wrong. Yeah. Um, (laughs) He was like full human, correct? Like there's no, there's no demigod in there. Depends if he's fathered by Poseidon. Exactly, exactly. But the thing about, I mean, I kind of, like that he the idea of him being fathered by poseidon specifically because poseidon is the shittiest god like so awful yeah zeus gets a bad rap and i actually just like in the episode that's dropping the day you and i are recording this i went on like just a very brief reminder to people that while i personally have not emphasized all the times that poseidon is bad because there aren't a lot of narrative stories associated with it Mm -hmm. like he is worse than zeus because is in a way that Zeus was like, I love you. I don't care that you don't want to have sex with me. Right. I love you. Poseidon was not like that. Yeah. And so obviously Zeus is still a rapist. Don't get me wrong. But he's that type of rapist man who, when you confront him about it, will say that it was consensual. Oh, absolutely. Whereas Poseidon is not. He's <laughs> like, not concerned with that at exactly, all. Exactly. Exactly. He is like much more troubling and violent and like just wildly problematic. And so Theseus being his son fits yeah it fits very well at the same time i think it does also fit for him to be entirely human just like son of a king who is walking around just impregnating women across (laughs) greece just like littering sons everywhere and then theseus is like i'm gonna be the best one and he's just like sticks to it because he's jealous of heracles and then just like keeps on keeping on (laughs) exactly and so okay the best thing about Theseus is honestly going through all of the absolute mad shit that he did. Yeah. So to start at the very beginning, yes, he's born in this place called Trozen, Treason, depending on how you want to pronounce it. I kind of like Treason because it yeah. suits Theseus. So he's born in this place to this mother who like, was impregnated by either Poseidon or probably Aegeus. And Aegeus just leaves. Yep. So like, I guess even to go back right to the beginning, like Aegeus needs a son. He's the king of Athens. He needs an heir. He marries one woman. She can't have a son. And so he gives up. Exactly. We'll get there. Yeah. And then so he marries another one. She doesn't have a child. So he gives up, which is like in itself horrifying. Yeah. Because also women like did not have a role. Like you didn't. If a man left you, you're fucked. Yeah, you're completely there's nothing you fucked. Can do. Exactly. Like, you're just screwed. And so he does that to two different women, and then he finally goes to the Oracle, which tells him some weird thing about loosening a wineskin. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sorry. I read that, like, imagery, and I was just like, ew. It was just <laughs> ew. <laughs> yeah. <It> was- <laughs> <laughs> sorry. No, you're not wrong. You're not wrong. But that finally, you know, loosening a wineskin happens in this place called Treason with his friend's daughter. Because he goes to just stay there on his way back from the Oracle, which is not even on the way back. So I don't know if he just went down to Treason, whatever. But like he stays with his friend. He sleeps with his friend's daughter. And then he leaves. But before he leaves, he's kind of like, hey, if you happen to have a son, Mm -hmm. let me know. If it's a daughter, (laughs) Don't bother. Yeah, exactly. I want nothing to do with her. But if it's a son, there are some sandals under a rock over here. And that's how I'll know. And And a sword. Oh, yeah. I I was just going to focus on the footwear (laughs) just because, like, I just love the idea of, like, here's your inheritance, boy. (laughs) Wrap around sandals. You have to lift a rock. Yeah. And get sandals that we're then to assume are not crushed. I don't know. Yeah, or rotted in any way for, like, the 16 (laughs) to 18 years he left them underneath a rock. But okay. And see, so Aegeus and these women he left behind in Athens is what also leads me to suggest that uh, Theseus's father is Poseidon mm. because like sorry but if you marry two women and you are actively trying to have children with them and yes. it's not happening for two different women like you sir are yeah. probably the problem exactly that's just like basic biology of exactly. like that's how fertility works and uh as we know because of like actual science like the male's Sperm is what decides the sex of a baby, if you want to be super binary about it. And, like, he's just like, ah, goddamn women. At least he didn't (laughs) behead them like King Henry VIII. (laughs) This is true. And I think it's explicitly because of the rules in Greece where he could just be like, see you later. And, like, they couldn't cause him any trouble at all. 
uh, which is like its own level of problematic, even yeah. though at least the women lived. But yeah, we don't hear about them anymore. We just hear about Ethra, who does become the mother of of Theseus, whoever's father or or whoever son Theseus may actually be. Exactly. Yeah. And then like everything starts for Theseus because of like you said, he was jealous of Heracles, his cousin. Yeah. Which is so like everything about Theseus is based in non-traditional heroic natures. Yeah. Not like, like nothing about him is traditionally heroic in terms of like what the ancient Greeks would view as traditionally heroic. Yeah. Like this is a funny masculinity that he has. Like mm-hmm. even if you're thinking about it in terms of future from the Greek uh, literature of like the early modernists, like the Shakespearean era, like his being like seething with jealousy of his cousin usually denotes that this guy is going to be a bad guy. And then you get into the the Victorians and he's just like not of noble birth or even known parentage. And that's like, that's not cool either. So it's like, he doesn't quite fit with any of the literary canonical ideas of like super he-man masculinity. And we will get to why. But I think first we have to go through the crimes of Theseus. Yeah. They are long and numerous. They really are. And but that's what is so fascinating and what will connect it to like you're saying later, like everything about him is wrong and the way he doesn't connect to traditional heroic values. But so, you know, he kind of starts everything because of Heracles, but then he does, you know, discover that Aegeus is his father. So he's like, okay, well, Aegeus is the king of Athens. So obviously Mm -hmm. I want to go find this man. Now, the thing to keep in mind too is Athens is not Athens at this time. Right. We're not talking about what we think of as Athens, like this city where almost all of our knowledge of classical Greek history comes Mm -hmm. from. It is, this is like pre-Athens, like early Athens in a way that like Theseus is often denoted as the founder of Athens, Mm -hmm. even though technically speaking, it was founded by like a guy named Erechtheus or Erechthonius. I always mix the two up. One of them is first and one of them is second. Gotcha. But yeah, so Athens is this weird place where it's kind of like in its infancy slash not officially, you know, what it will become. But Theseus still wants to be a prince of somewhere. So he's like, I'll head to Athens. Like, of course, yeah, this man who just wants the fame that his cousin has, he just wants to be as great as Heracles, who like shows up at random one time, right? Like Heracles visits him when he's a kid. And then this is when Theseus develops his obsession. And what is it that Theseus like, quote unquote saves Heracles from something right do you yeah. remember in I, your, you've recently looked into this <laughs> I don't remember off the top of my head unfortunately that it was Fair. just like he he was just like oh my cousin's here he's totally badass like oh I help him in some like completely nondescript or particularly life-threatening manner and then <laughs> it was just like Oh, so I can beat his ass when we're going. Like, he is such a fuckboy at such a young age that it's almost impressive. <laughs> he's he's just a mess. Yeah. And so, yeah, like, he, he decides to go to Athens to start on this stuff. And then his walk from treason to <laughs> Athens. So, so treason is on the Peloponnesian Peninsula, but mm-hmm. it's on, like, a peninsula off the Peloponnesian Peninsula. Gotcha. Which means that while distance-wise it's not that far from Athens, he does have to, like, walk all the way up to Corinth to get over the Isthmus, which is the piece of land that connects the Peloponnesian Peninsula to mainland Greece. Gotcha. And then he has to walk across the Isthmus through Megara and then to Athens. So it is a long walk by land. He definitely could have done it quicker by boat, which actually adds to my argument that all of this is for show. Yeah. Because, like... The Greeks were a naval people. Like, yeah. He absolutely could have taken a boat. And then it's literally just like across the water. <laughs> like it's like there's a little <laughs> island in between, like little Agena. And then otherwise it's just like right there. So it's like, super performative that he was like, no, I'll walk. And it was like, oh, dude, it's just like take a boat, take a skipper. It's fine. You'll be exactly. there in like 20 minutes. It's cool. Like this is not. And he is just like, no, no, no. I have to go and kill a boar on foot. And I have to go kill uh, everything. Yeah. So that is the thing. Everything. Everyone is yeah. the key. So on his walk from treason to Athens, he encounters six, I believe, because it's the, it's her, it's Theseus's six labors. These are later called like as if they're anything like Heracles's 12 labors. <laughs> he wasn't assigned them. He just it, did. He them. just did them. And what he did was kill five men and a, uh, 
pig. Yeah. And often you can actually find sourcing where that pig is actually a woman. Cool. That Great. they call a pig. <laughs> Fantastic. Awesome. Yeah. I love this. And Great. so the thing about Theseus and why I argue with good reason that he's actually just a serial killer <laughs> is <laughs> this is very well founded <laughs> so he kills these five maybe six people in the ways that he tells the athenians later we have no witnesses mm-hmm. other than theseus himself he tells people that they are bandits killing innocent people who come across them in these ways where it's like yeah sure dude because what we have got the guy who asks you to tie his shoes or Mm -hmm. clean his shoes or something like that and then when you bend down kicks you off a cliff into the waiting jaws of a sea turtle below (laughs) i was like you kicked a man (laughs) off of a cliff that's just unhinged like even in the the link that you sent me which i then referred to other stories it was just kind of like there's some debate on whether or not the guy was actually a bandit i was like okay so you're toying with the idea that this man might have just been thrown off of a cliff for no good reason and frankly, that is one of the least of his crimes. Yes. Yeah. Because he goes on to find another man who, again, Theseus tells the people of Athens when he gets there, that this man happens to have this bed. We're going to jump in straight to the bed one. I don't ever remember the order of these, so I'm just going yeah. from memory of the different don't people. I don't think it really matters. But... It doesn't. The point is it's all from trees into Athens. And so there's this guy who has a bed, and he... Like, captures you on the way and forces you to fit this bed for the only reason we have is just that, what, like, he's a sociopath? Like, he's just a murderer? He's just like Hannibal Lecter and he just happens to be on this walk? We all know that Stranger Danger isn't real. Like, (laughs) like... I mean, what I think that this walk from Treason to Athens is basically like Northern California in the 70s. Yes. And it just like coincidentally happened to have all of these people who were like the most creative and horrifying serial killers. He's like of the Zodiac time. killer of Greek <laughs> mythology. Exactly. It's like that time period when you had everybody. You had the Zodiac and you had the East Area Rapist and you had the, the Night Stalker and all of these things yeah. in this time period. And it's like, okay, that happened. But I mean, what are the chances that it really happened? happened to theseus let's be perfectly Pretty honest small. he's the serial killer here yes it's very all, much so it's all a lie and so yeah the, this bed where either you're too tall so you get your limbs chopped off to fit or you're too short so you get stretched and it's like i mean so here's the other thing about this we don't really have other stories from greek mythology that suggest that any of this was like a normal thing right 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 like, like, this is not their chosen torture, like, inviting no. people into their house and, like, in order to hurt them. Like, from my very limited knowledge of, like, the Greek society, like, you don't let people into your house in order to hurt them. Like, it's more of a, a politeness. You feed them, you offer them wine, oil their feet, like, that kind of thing. <laughs> it is not only just, like, a politeness. It is, like, an actual rule. So it's this thing called Xenia. Yeah. Which is literally like the thing they lived by. Like Zeus was the god of it. It is the guest host relationship. It is sacred in a way that nothing else is sacred in okay. the world of Greek mythology. Thank like, you. Like, yeah. It is so far beyond just like a nicety that we would consider now. And it's literally like the examples we have of the worst punishments in all of Greek myth, like all the people that are like in Tartarus facing the worst of it is because they broke Xenia. That's bananas. Mm -hmm. That's absolutely bananas to me. So like maybe the concept of Theseus being invited to this guy's house is that like, this is like the cruelest thing anybody could do in all of Greek society. But at the same time, like it is also very difficult for me to believe that it could have happened of just like number one thou shalt not kill kind of levels of of you know human understanding of how you treat people well exactly it's like way less likely that this guy was doing it but even if i mean i don't really know what they kind of decided the rules of zinnia zinnia whatever were when 
when somebody like started it right (laughs) you know because the thing is too is like theseus would also be breaking the guest host relationship by doing this to the guy even if the guy threatened him yeah like that's why it was okay that odysseus kind of like slaughtered all of his house guests at the end of the odyssey because they had kind of broken yes but even he was punished like that's intensely for that which is the thing that's often left out of like he got in a hell of a lot of trouble yeah and he just did it anyway um so yeah it's like it, it is definitely like a weird a weird thing there and also i mean it's just overall bizarre it just doesn't it doesn't it fit doesn't nothing fit. that theseus did fits and because the next thing is my absolute favorite which is the tree bender <laughs> and it's just like Honestly, what are the fucking chances that there were this many people doing this much fucked up shit on this walk? It's just impossible. No. I live in Southern California, and I think if I walked to San Francisco, like, I wouldn't come across that many damn weirdos. Like, it's a far distance, and it's California, so there's a lot of weirdos. But, like, (laughs) I don't think there would be that many damn weirdos. (laughs) No, it's really, like, it's really so deeply unlikely and it's just so funny because so the tree bender is my favorite because (laughs) he kills people by bending trees tying their feet to one their hands to another and then just letting go (laughs) i mean is he described as like an ogre or like uh there's no information about like being a fantastic beastie no it's just like so if it's like a dude you can't bend anything that large. So it's like, I have two decent sized olive trees in my front yard. And I'm just thinking about like, even I couldn't like bend them that much. And I'm a pretty tall lady. And then I'm just like, or if you were strung up in between them, like kind of like hammock style, like that wouldn't hurt all that much. No, I'm picturing cypress trees because I know they're over there. I mean, they had fir trees and stuff too. So like it's probably probably bigger trees, but I'm picturing like two really big cypress trees, but he'd have to like climb to the top, attach ropes, pull them down, secure them somehow. (laughs) Exactly. Exactly. Like wait, wait here while I do all of this. It's the most extensive way, like most difficult, detail oriented, (laughs) like time consuming way to kill somebody when this is ancient Greece, like just fucking stab him through with a spear. Seriously, you'll be fine. Like, like rocks aplenty. You're in Greece. Like, yeah. Bash him over the head. Like, yeah. (laughs) And if you're a giant, so you're doing like large cypress trees or something and you're just like bending them with your big giant arms, like just smash the guy. Like he's a puny little human. Just go like, and you're done. (laughs) Yeah. It really, it doesn't make sense. And that is the key to Theseus. I just have like the ultimate desire to be like just little bunny foo-foo him like walking through the forest <laughs> scooping up the field nice yeah. and bopping him on the head like that's the just worst do it. poem Why it's so weird read that as a kid that it's one so made weird. me so sad yeah <laughs> uh oh right paraphetes okay so paraphetes is another one i'm like making sure we don't miss any of them and he was just like i guess he just was a guy who clubbed people Boom. I was so confused when they started talking about how Theseus, like he took it, he killed him and he took his club. And then they were like, and he was walking around with it like Heracles did with the lion that he had slaughtered. And I was like, am I misunderstanding what they're talking about? Because killing a lion and wearing its skin is way more badass than walking around with a shillelagh. Like it just simply is. And I was like, he's so proud of it. He's so proud of this goddamn club. And I'm just like, it could be anyone's. What are you talking about? I do think it's also because so Heracles is very famous for his club Mm -hmm. but still like if they're comparing it to the lion like not only is the lion impressive but the Nimian lion its skin couldn't be pierced yeah so like Heracles wrestled it to the point of strangling this lion is the only way that he killed the Nimian lion yes like the Nimian lion is one of his biggest feats it is an actual labor one it was assigned to him he had to do it for very many like mythological legal reasons he was required (laughs) and it was an animal that was causing actual real harm to people in the surrounding areas and therefore heracles actually did them all a favor yeah by handling it which is the case for most of heracles's labors some of them were you know um eurystheus being petty definitely but at the same time too like so heracles 
didn't in his labors i don't think any of them explicitly involved murdering another human being right one of them was just cleaning out staples. I was yeah. Like, yeah, that's fantastic. Like, that's gross. Like, and super cool that he did it and figured it out. Like, it requires cunning. Most of Theseus's require, like, just killing people in yeah. really unforeseen ways. It's always people. So we have, yeah, we have Paraphetes, this club bearer who Theseus basically just beat. We have Sinus, my beloved tree bender. And not only did Heracles or Heracles definitely not Heracles he wouldn't do this and I'm not even a big fan of his but not only did Theseus just like kill Sinus which this tree thing that we're supposed to believe that Sinus was doing anyway he also raped his daughter and got her pregnant right and it's like and then just bounced what yeah yeah what like holy shit that's just and this it's this tiny detail yeah. in all of the stories where it's like haha like also this happened right it's just horrifying and it's always positioned as like an insult to the guy and not an attack on the girl and exactly like, giving it major squinty eyes like how dare you yeah it's just it's like it's not about the woman at all it's about yeah. like oh well then he really fucked with sinus by doing this it's yeah. so dark you run into that in victorian literature a lot too. oh god yeah it's just like oh, it's just so oppressive women as property yay <laughs> good times um oh yeah and then we have kerkion um who was at Eleusis. I don't see how that's fair. You can't go like fucking with people at Eleusis. So I guess he ran into Kerkion at Eleusis, which Eleusis is like where the Eleusinian mysteries are. It is one of the most sacred sites in all oh, okay, of cool. ancient Greece. Yeah. It is literally like, so the Eleusinian mysteries are the number one mystery cult of ancient Greece. Um, mystery cults are a cool concept that I don't know enough about. But I'm totally basic, into it though. <laughs> they're very cool. The idea of it in general, like a very, very brief overview is the mysteries of Eleusis um, or Eleusinian mysteries were devoted to Demeter and later Persephone and sometimes Dionysus even later. But basically were like if you were um, initiated into these mysteries, which we don't know what the yeah, real initiation stuff was or... because they kept it a secret because well, it was yep. a mystery. There's a reason there's that word. That... <laughs> Just, but if you were, if you were initiated, you got to go to like a better place in the underworld. Gotcha. Like you went to the Elysian fields, um, kind of, it's like the closest thing they had to like an idea of heaven. Gotcha. Cool. In any Noted. case, Eleusis is really fucking sacred. And we're just to believe that Kerkion was there wrestling people. His, so Theseus went and had to wrestle him to death. You know what you always want to do? murder someone in the holiest spot in your country and society it's mm -hmm. totally a great idea it really endears you to god totally yeah they yeah. love it they love it when you do that <laughs> <laughs> and then the last is which for one we didn't i didn't say the man with the bed's name and it is procrustes it is one of the best names in all of what Greek is mythology. it procrustes awesome Awesome. Pro crusty. Just <laughs> great. I love it. But then the last is this Chromionian sow, this pig, um, who, like, so that is the one where we're to believe that he finally killed, like, an animal that was supposedly causing trouble. I mean, one, it's a pig. Yeah, the Chromionian sow, so we're to believe, is like this, you know, killer pig. <laughs> But there's this idea that it is actually this woman who was called the Chromionian sow and she was just like an old hag or something and he Aww. killed her. Um, oh, yeah. So, no, wait, he did kill her. Okay, so sorry, I'm also on the Wikipedia. But so basically, she was it was bred by this woman named Fia. And so he killed the Chromionian sow and then I think he also killed Fia. But then there's a lot of versions where Fia is the sow and therefore he just killed this woman and also we're calling her a pig. <sighs> that is so upsetting. <laughs> like, I want there to be a pig. Like, I, you, I'm a big animal rights person, and I don't think you should ever, like, kill animals for no good reason. And I'm just kind of like, all right, so, like, but I need there to be an actual pig. Because if it's just calling this woman names bef before and after you murder her, I, j j ah, I'm speechless. Just yep. utterly speechless. It's crazy. It's just, I mean, Theseus is just so much. And so those are his so-called six labors. And so he finally gets to Athens and he's like, look it, I've arrived. Hello. I'm so fancy. I've killed six people yeah. on my walk. And I'm going to tell you that they deserved it for all of these, this myriad of incredibly creative ways. But ultimately, my six so-called labors 
were just like killing people just slaughtering people left and right for you know in a not too densely populated country at this point mm-hmm. who they probably go weeks months without getting the opportunity to wrong someone and theseus is just like sharpening knives in the corner like a creep <laughs> just an absolute creep <laughs> He's just such a creep. And then, so once he gets to Athens, it's really interesting because that's when he gets to encounter fucking Medea. And like Medea very nearly kills him. How cool would that have been? been I mean, obviously we wouldn't know quite how cool it would be if that was the story, but I just like to dream about it anyway. (sighs) She almost got it. She She almost hit the pinnacle. She knew. Yeah, she knew. So he rolls up. He's like, First, I guess he doesn't tell Aegeus he's his son. He's just trying to, because of course yeah. he's being a creep. So he also like rolls up and lies about who he is. Trickery. And God, he's such a dick. And so, but Medea's <laughs> like, this guy's here for some fuckery and like, exactly. I'm going to do something about it. So she tries to poison him and she's stopped, unfortunately. But Medea doesn't get killed. She just leaves and I respect her. Yeah. For it. Medea just gets to just like go off and live in her own sadness for a little while. Yeah. And yeah. You know, she finally gets to Colchis. She gets to return to her homeland of Colchis, where she, like, actually, I like to believe, has some agency because she's no longer ruled in this awful Greek world by men. She yeah. has to leave the Greek world entirely and return to being, like, queen badass who can just pretend she never had children to begin <laughs> with. <laughs> she can put the whole thing behind her. Exactly. Oh, yeah. <laughs> kids? What kids? Eh. Eh, distant memories but like (laughs) and then poor Theseus is just kind of like well actually I'm your kid because I didn't get poisoned with this wine and Aegeus is like I see those shoes and it's just (laughs) so bizarre I mean I know the sword plays a role but like I know I like the sandals I I need it to be the footwear um and then then he's he's just kind of like my boy and declares him heir, even though there's other people around and it's so bizarre and Medea had a kid so like they would have had an heir which is like I think uh, now I'm remembering as I keep talking I'll just remember more of the details but Medea had a kid and so that's why partially why she wanted to do away with Theseus because like she knew because she's a smart lady yeah but like he basically had an heir he didn't need this fucking shithead coming in here exactly killed a bunch of people for no reason and just and then he kills his dad (laughs) Well, we're, that <laughs> that's going to come later. But Lord, does he. Oh, my God. But so the thing is, the the intro, one of the like next sort of interesting parts that like directly links to Heracles in a really interesting like juxtaposition is one of the only like actual so-called heroic feats that Theseus does is to capture and kill the Marathonian bull. Right. Who was originally the Cretan bull who Heracles wrestled and captured and brought away from Crete where it was originally terrorizing those people. The Cretan bull is actually the father of the Minotaur. Right. So it's, we've got all these connections. Synergy. The, like, exactly. <laughs> the, so the Cretan bull is left in Marathon to become the Marathonian bull. And then that's when Theseus has it. And so we have this like direct connection to Heracles who did like an actual like labor an actual heroic thing. And then Theseus, meanwhile, he gets this chance to do this thing that is traditional hero action. And I still think like, and I mean, depend. It, this really depends who you're talking to, but you're talking so to he, me. So you probably exactly. know what this is. These going. are my theories, which is that he doesn't, he still does it for show. Yeah. So he captures a Marathonian bull and then he parades it through mm-hmm. the city of Athens. Just parades yeah. it. Like, look what I've done. I've helped you so much. Where would you be without me? And then he sacrifices it on, on an altar. So he does kill it. But like, this is just not heroic action. Glory amongst exactly. the gods. So, like, again, limited understanding of Greek mythology sometimes of just like, I understand that gods needed sacrifices and meat was like a really big deal. Like, to kill an animal was a really big deal. So, he's doing it again for his own glory and his own glorification in trying to like win over the gods. And it's just like, 
the people you murdered, you couldn't let anybody know about or have any evidence of it. But the critter, like you have to do it in front of everybody and make sure everybody gets your best angle and like make sure there's multiple cameras on you to make sure that everybody can see everything that you're doing. And then you like offer the flesh of the creature to the gods. And it's like, (laughs) oh my God, you couldn't have just done it in a field where the critter was. No, you have to do it in front of everybody. (laughs) That is exactly it. And that is what, like, lends this theory of he is just a serial killer of humans doing it all for show. Yep. Like, it lends so much credence because we have no proof that these bandits were doing mm-hmm. anything bad, that they deserve death. We have no proof, no witnesses of any of that. But we have all the witnesses in the world to the Marathonian Bull because it was something he could do easily. Yes. Like, and it'd make Ugh. himself feel famous and important and, like, really cement himself in the minds of the Athenians. He's such a schmuck. He is he's such a fuckboy. He's so awful. <laughs> he's just so shit. And like, it's just so fascinating that like, I love to, I love to hate him. You yeah. know, like he, he's so fun to hate and he's so fun to, to like go through piece by piece and talk about this. Like the number of people that I've turned onto my side or <laughs> just sort of pointed out these things where like I had Jennifer Saint on the show, right? Who who wrote the new novel Ariadne, and so like, she's very deep in Theseus, and yeah. you know Theseus does not come across well in her no. book. And but even still, I was like, "Did you notice he's one of the only heroes who o- almost only killed people?" And she was like, "Holy shit! Oh You're my god!" Right. Like I think she was too proper to say "holy shit," but yeah. like it, I, it's still kind of like you can watch it blow her mind, where she's just kind of like, "Oh, you're right!" Like. I it's one of those things that together that's a thing you don't you don't think about it because you just take it as this like heroic story because that's the way it's presented like they're called his six labors it you're supposed yeah. to connect them to heracles and so it, it takes like some real like obsession i think on my end or spending four straight years talking about this shit weekly to yeah. be like no no like this is not normal no. like it it is it doesn't fit yeah. the narrative of greek mythology It's fascinating. It's not a labor to kill someone. Like a labor is something that is difficult to do, uh, noble to do, like you mentioned before, like helpful to the people of the society. And it's just like killing a guy who lives in the woods is and is weird. Like that's not beneficial. It's just not to the... And also it's easy to kill people. Like I, I'm not speaking from experience, but like it's <laughs> it, it's not... like Comparatively. Take, yeah, yeah. It's not like yeah. taking on a mystical magical lion. Like, no, it's it no is, Hydra. It's a dude. Yeah. Like... Ugh. And the thing about Heracles' labor is that they're assigned to him. Yeah. You know, like he kills his family and he needs purification yeah. or sometimes it's something some other reason he needs it but regardless like Eurystheus this king who has control over Heracles mm-hmm. assigns him these things to do they are required yeah. for various reasons is it a labor if you're just walking tromping through the woods and decide mm-hmm. to kill someone and just killing people thank you like, that no. doesn't seem reasonable no no and he's he's not done yet because I mean like as you said yeah. he kills his father I mean indirectly but very much his fault so the next thing, heroic action that Theseus has to prove himself worthy of is he decides to volunteer to be on the next ship over to Crete, one of the youth that will be sacrificed to the Minotaur so because awful. of the deal that Minos and, and Aegeus made so long ago. And oh, so he's going to he's going to save everyone. He's going to be the hero he's again. He's going to be that guy. And all he fucking had to do was promise to change the colors of his sails. That's it. That's because all he had to do. Poor Aegeus is so worried. I mean, he's going off to this perilous thing. The Minotaur is legitimately terrifying. Like, the Minotaur is an yeah. actual big deal. And so Aegeus just wants some, you know, assurance yeah. that his son is not going to come back dead or that he's not going to have to wait as long yeah. as he, you know, normally would to find out whether his son is alive or dead. So all Theseus has to do is, cha- yeah. is change his sails from black yeah. to white on his way home. It's like when your mom goes, text me when you get home, and then you don't do it. And it's just like, yeah, your mom's freaking out because she doesn't know whether you're alive or dead or safe. And he was supposed to do it with sales, and he just 
forgot. <sighs> yeah. Yeah, he's just such a shit. And so, you know, even before even before we get to that next yeah. action. So he arrives on Crete to kill this minotaur and he meets the princess Ariadne, who's a nice girl. Mm. You know, she's really sheltered. It's hard to live on Crete. Crete is so far away from yeah. the rest of the Greek world. It is kind of like in its own little world in the Mediterranean. And especially like the Minoan culture is also quite separate. They're a lot... Not a lot more ancient than all of it. They're a lot more ancient than Athens. Yeah. That's for sure, you know. And they are this, like, bull-obsessed people for a variety of reasons. <laughs> um, so Ariadne is, like, she's lonely. She meets this prince who is super hot. Yeah. And he wants her help. And he promises her that if she helps him kill this minotaur, that he will take her away to Athens where he will marry her. She will become queen. She'll be on the mainland. She'll be yeah. like amongst all the other people. She sees this as like the the best life option mm-hmm. for herself. Yeah. He's because... love bombing her. He's yes. telling her everything she wants to hear in order to secure her help. And it's so manipulative and so deeply screwed up. And he's just lying presumably through like we you get the impression that he needs something from her not you know and then of course knowing as you do like the end of ending of the story it's just like oh my god you are the most manipulative creep in the world mm-hmm, mm-hmm. yeah I mean it's so it's so manipulative and so dark and shitty because like of course you know women required a man mm-hmm. in order to live their lives right yeah. like so ariadne was the possession of her father minos and she didn't want to be i mean minos is notoriously shit yeah he caused his wife to have that horror show with the minotaur in the first place mm-hmm. like minos is a shit he's violent he's like a warmonger i mean granted there's a lot of yeah to do with like who wrote these stories but in this story that is the way Minos is presented. And so Ariadne wants out. And so this is her best option. She can go marry this prince of Athens. She'll have a much better life. She'll mm-hmm. be way more free. All of these things. And so she helps him. She helps him kill her brother, mm-hmm. which I think is a thing that's not talked about a lot. And we don't know whether they had any kind of affection for the Minotaur. We know that it's quite interesting. I really like talking about the Minotaur because he's one of the very few, if not the only um, half man half creature that is top half creature oh interesting yes and i think that is why that he is also the only one who is like a straight up monster yeah yeah he doesn't have a human face yeah like we're not talking you know a centaur or uh, like any kind or you know there's like sea gods that are half fish and stuff Mm -hmm. but they're they're always top half person but minotaur is top half bull and bottom half person and it's so interesting in that way where because he really is the only like partially person who is like a hundred percent monster interesting oh that's so fascinating i never realized that but you're entirely right and then also like not to get too weird but that also implies like a sexual threat of against like human mm-hmm. being human mm-hmm. women and that is just like yeah it makes sense that ariadne was just kind of like i need to get the hell out of here this is this is not a safe place to be and she's young ish she's like yeah she's definitely young she would have been like teens yeah exactly yeah oh my god and theseus is just like i know my glory will lead to your salvation (sighs) oh and so yeah i mean the only reason that theseus succeeds in killing the minotaur is because of ariadne Mm -hmm. because he's like imprisoned once he arrives because he's meant to be a sacrifice to the minotaur and so she like frees him she gives him a weapon and she gives him the thread that'll lead him through the labyrinth because he would have otherwise maybe he would have gotten to kill the minotaur maybe not either way he would have died in there 100 percent. yeah like it's just he could not have done any of it without her and then so you know he does take her off the island as he promised (sighs) And then they sail up north a little bit and land for the night on the island of Naxos where, you know, they have Mm -hmm. just a little bit of a snooze. And (laughs) (sighs) by the time that Ariadne wakes up, Theseus is gone and she can see the ship in the distance. That's so brutal. That is just so (laughs) deeply upsetting. It's so crazy. And there are all these versions of it where, like... 
he is forced to leave her there or someone tells him he has to kill her or Dionysus makes him leave because he wants to marry Adne- marry Ariadne. And there's so many of these things where I'm like, no, Mm-mm. no, none of it suits. None of it actually fits with his yeah. character. And like, isn't Ariadne like knocked up at this point? No, she doesn't okay. have children by Theseus. Gotcha. Thank the good Thank God. Lord. Okay. Right? Like, yeah. yeah. Thank God for Ar- for Ariadne's sake, but yeah, she does not exactly. have children by okay. Theseus. Thank yeah. God. I, I, yeah. I, okay. Thank goodness. I mean, you wouldn't be wrong in assuming because that yeah, is the mythology. Exactly. Like, <laughs> how could we make this situation worse? Like, exactly. that would be it. Yeah, and like it seems, and certainly this is the case with the gods, but it's like every time they have sex, somebody's getting pregnant. Yeah, exactly. Sure. It's like it works every yeah. time. Exactly. Thank God. <laughs> yeah, but no, not not for Ariadne, fortunately. And then of course we have this good version of it where like Dionysus finds her, they fall in love, and she's actually like made a goddess by him oh, good. which is great yeah so we'll leave that off with ariadne but we still get to blame theseus for leaving her on a fucking island yeah, he's and still then a schmuck like yeah such a shit like just leaves her there i'm appalled at how that just gets glossed over like that's a normal thing for an air quotes hero to do like yeah. especially if you're comparing him to heracles who was essentially tricked into murdering his wife and children and then you have theseus who is not tricked or befuddled or befouled in any way to treat this woman that he has an agreement with this poorly he's never like oh the wool was never pulled over theseus's eyes in order to make him act like a jerk or do something harmful it's a choice every single goddamn time (laughs) I think that's such a good point, and I hadn't totally made that connection of, like, so many of the other heroes and characters, like, when they do something shitty, it's because they're influenced by the gods. Yeah. Like, often, you know, that's a commentary on on women, more often than not, because it's always, like, poor Hera. Yeah. But still, like, they're, they're influenced in some way almost every time. Even, like, Medea was influenced to fall in love with Jason, and yeah. then that led to everything. Like, but you're right. Theseus is not influenced by any god. He is just naturally shitty. And there are so many versions. Like, that's the thing about Greek mythology, right? Like, depending what you read, yeah. like, so many different variations and versions. But in every version of Theseus and Ariadne, they do not live happily ever after. Like, yeah. there is no happily ever after version regardless. So it's like, it, it, maybe she didn't end up with Dionysus. Maybe she was killed, whatever. But in no way does she, like, arrive with him in Athens and yeah. live a nice life. It's not like Dionysus sees her and goes like, oh, my God, I love her. I'm going to make her boyfriend leave her so I can have her for myself. Like, that would be logical. That would be a thing that happens <laughs> in Greek mythology. But, like, that doesn't happen. It, it's not until she's left on a damn island watching her boyfriend sail away. Like does the god even notice her and go like oh this is a real bum situation like and she looks really pretty so like let's figure it out like there is one source that suggests that but i think it's cop it's just yeah. like trying to make theseus look better like Absolutely. i don't yeah i don't think it's if anything, there's only really. one version of yeah. something in a greek mytho- like in greek mythology they had some time to futz with it like yeah. if there's only one that has to be just like someone with a political agenda <laughs> Well, and I think what I what I suggested that you skim through is Plutarch's Life of Theseus because mm-hmm. I really enjoy it because the thing about Plutarch, because he's like writing in a much later time. I do think he was Greek, but he was at least writing in Roman in the Roman right. period. And he wrote all these biographies of both real and mythological people. And he presents the biography of Theseus as if he is trying to figure out fact from fiction, yeah. which is so fascinating. So like he is coming at it like Theseus existed, mm-hmm. which because, you know, and we'll, we'll get to it, but there is like they count Theseus as their founder in a way that they often suggest he was alive. In gotcha. A, you know, in a way that, but, I mean, everyone, I mean, depending on the, the time period, Romulus they all be- and Remus thing about Rome too. Is, and they're yeah, like, exactly. sure, certainly this happened. And it's like, it did not. It yeah. did not. There's no way. And it depends when you're talking about and who you're talking about when it comes to like what they believed was like real, real versus mythology. But regardless, like Plutarch is coming at this from a much later time, looking at it and trying to pull out what he thinks is real and what isn't, mm-hmm. which is fascinating. And even he is like, Theseus was a shit. Yeah. There like, was many times where yeah. he was just like, this was not okay. <laughs> 
<laughs> yeah, and like you know somebody is a fucking asshole if like a, an ancient man is yeah, calling them an asshole. Exactly. It's his job. It's Plutarch's job to explain why this man was a hero and he was if and he is like this man no. was not heroic. <laughs> it's great. Yeah. It's so crazy. And then so yeah, like you know, next from there, he just like forgets to change the sails on, sails on his ship, and so his father throws himself from a cliff. Yeah, and then I, we don't even. I mean, there's some suggestion that Theseus. There's some suggestion that Theseus was very distraught about leaving Ariadne, or that he was distraught about his father dying. But again, I think that's all. It just keeps yeah. on keeping on. It's all for show. Like he's such a little. He's just a narcissist in like the darkest yes. way. <laughs> Because then, you know, and the, the timeline from here is hard to track, but he goes on to eventually marry Ariadne's sister. Cool. Great. Fantastic. Yep. Probably to, gar- to, like, uh, to get a peace deal between Athens and Crete and not because of any kind of, like, nice thing. Yeah. But then also sometime in the interim, he travels to the land of the Amazons. Yep. Kills some Amazons, kidnaps their queen, brings her back, forces her to be queen, so-called, of Athens, causes a fucking war yep. with the Amazons, and and then has a child by her, who he then just, like, sends to live off in treason away from him. He doesn't yeah. want anything to do with this kid. And it's interesting because the kid is a boy, so you would think he would but i think it's because this kid is an amazonian yeah and so like does theseus want this like boy who was made to be like around strong women you know or he does not no yeah Yeah. exactly my other favorite part about that is that they're not sure like which amazon he captured and Mm -hmm. raped to make his wife they're like it could be um uh, uh, Hippolyta, who's like often in, I know in a Midsummer Night's Dream, Theseus and Hippolyta, Hippolyta yeah. are walking around. Um, but then it could be uh, Antiope, and we're not entirely sure which one it is. And it's just kind of like it was one of those broads that he like, you know, married through rape. Yeah. Oh well, like great. It's really crazy, and we don't know when either, because there's there's a few different like heroic quests um, to the Amazons, and so it's always quite interesting there because also Heracles has dealings with the Amazons, um, and then the Argonauts do as well. And both Heracles and Theseus are on the Argo. Gotcha. They're Argonauts, like in their earlier life before they. Well, Heracles was an established hero, but Theseus Theseus is so it's so tricky to track but it's yeah it's quite interesting i mean the whole amazon thing is crazy but then on top of that like one of his biggest claims to fame and the next time he gets to actually encounter his beloved cousin heracles (sighs) who he reveres so much is that he gets together with his friend pirithus and they are like those types of men who make each other so much worse. Yeah. Like you yeah. think Theseus can't be bad. And then he gets together with Parathus and you're like, holy oh fuck, you people are monsters. Yeah. It's, it's like, like frat boy syndrome. It's so <sighs> bad. It's so bad. It's so frat boy because yes, like I, I don't even know where to start. So Theseus decides that he wants to abduct and marry air quotes helen yeah Yeah, air quotes indeed helen of sparta who is depending on your source somewhere in the realm of like nine to thirteen yeah she's a child she's an actual child like she is always before the marriageable age yes and he knows that. And so his plan is to kidnap her and then hide her away until she's old enough. Yeah. Which yeah. is, I mean, it's such a fucking horror show. Again, this was one of those moments where I was reading the Plutarch that you sent me. And I was just kind of like, he repeats over and over and over again that Helen is a child. She is a child, not of marriageable age, a child, 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 over and over again. And I, if I wasn't reading it on my computer, I would have thrown it because it was <laughs> so gross. And I was like, you know, again, like if an, an old man in ancient times is even saying, this is wholly unacceptable, it is wholly unacceptable. Yeah. Like, you, yeah, you... The idea that even Plutarch was like, what the fuck was he doing with this? Mm-hmm. Is like, 
it's no so motive crazy. given really no this, no it's just that he wanted to yeah heard about her you know had she to give it a shot pretty for a kid for a nine-year-old Ugh. yeah and then pirithus so they're gonna help each other because theseus wants helen and pirithus wants fucking persephone the queen of the goddamn underworld not gonna like, happen bud i, I just <laughs> between the two of them I, it's unbelievable to me that <laughs> That this is actually in a Greek myth where where we're supposed to revere and appreciate Theseus because we are like he yeah. is one of the top heroes of Greek mythology, and yet this is his story. Like this is his story: is he abducts a twelve year old, he hides her away, he causes another war. Mm-hmm. Like that's a war between like think. God, she had these twin older brothers who were, well, I guess they should all technically be the same age, regardless. Right. The Dioscori are her twin brothers. One of them's a god. And thankfully, like, they care yeah. and they get their sister back. They, like, go to fucking war like, with these minimal where bloodshed he's hidden her. for the fact that they need to, like, reclaim their sister and her honor and their entire kingdom's future. It's it's so horrifying. Also, now that I'm thinking about it, I love I love trying to work out any kind of basic level of chronology in Greek no, mythology it just because like, happen. they're all born from two eggs at the same time. But these boys are old enough to save her when she's nine. What's happening? <laughs> anyway, we won't we won't go there. Either way, the Dioscori, these amazing twin brothers, save her. Thank God. Thank God. Thank God. But then they're like, okay, cool. Well, I think all that also happens when Theseus is in the underworld with Perithous trying yeah. to get Persephone. Like, he's not even there for the war. The Dioscori just get her back. <laughs> he skipped the war? Thank God. He just skipped out? I, I just think bounced. he's not there. I think, yeah. I think that he went and he hid her away because she was too young. Thank God he at least thought she was too young. Like, gross horror. Well, let's oh my God. hope to God that wasn't, like, post-editing and post. Ugh. Well, I also think it was, like, partially that and partially that they made a deal that like yeah. you know he wasn't he had has to help his friend first yeah <laughs> thanks so, yeah, creepy best friend like, oh my god so they traveled in the underworld and they try to get persephone and this is where i just think like who do you think you are <laughs> doesn't persephone like actually love her husband and that's like known in the greek mythology that they actually kind of liked each other so uh the, i don't think so okay cool but a lot of people do. Gotcha. That is a the biggest romantic trope in the world. <laughs> yeah. Especially right now. Yeah. yeah. I do like, and that's not to say I don't like any of the, I I notoriously like Laura Olympus and absolutely no other adaptations of them right. as a romantic couple because Laura Olympus completely separates them from the abduction myth entirely. Gotcha. Okay. And cool. that is why I personally think it's okay. But regardless. Yeah. I, I don't see that, but even if they didn't love each other, she was strong. Yeah. So she becomes the queen of the underworld and she basically like overtakes Hades. Like she is the dread goddess of the underworld. She is the queen She's of the, boss. the dead. Yeah. She is the boss. She is powerful. Like they literally refer to her as the dread goddess. Right. And these two mortal ass men are just kind of mm-hmm. like, I'm going to waltz down there and just like take what's mine. Right. And thank God, like literally nothing happens yeah. in favor of them. Like, they go down there. They try this. Persephone's like, absolute yeah. biggest fuck you in the whole world. And she <laughs> traps them both in chairs. And they're never allowed to leave. Good. <laughs> they're just strapped there. And then eventually, eventually, over apparently, we're, we're to believe like a good long time. Eventually, Heracles is down there capturing Cerberus for one of his actual labors. <laughs> And that's when he frees Theseus, but he's not even allowed to free Perithous oh, because good. it was Perithous who wanted Persephone. So Perithous has to stay down there forever and Theseus gets brought up. And it's like, that fucker got what he deserved. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Oh my God. And so, yeah, Theseus comes up and I'm guessing this is when he figures out that Helen yeah. is gone. Oh my God. And I think this is almost either he was already married to Phaedra or this is when he decides to go marry Phaedra. And it's just like... Oh my god, the level, the level of things that this man did. He gets rewarded with women time and time again. And it's, oh, it's so galling. Like, he feels like such an unbelievably bad spinoff. You Mm -hmm. know, it feels like someone was like, 
you know, when like Armageddon and Deep Impact came out at the same time, <laughs> like that's what it feels like to me. And it was just kind of like one of these was a hit. Surely we need another one. And it's just like then they wrote Theseus and it was just he just paled in comparison to Heracles. And it's so embarrassing for Theseus. <laughs> it. It really is. It's all of those things. And the thing that, so I want to read some scholarship on this. I keep meaning to go looking, but I never know where to find that shit because I am not remotely academic. But so here's the thing about Theseus, which I think is fascinating. And again, why I want to learn what like super smart people say about this, because Theseus was, as I was saying earlier, like the so-called founder of Athens. Yeah. Right. Like there is, he basically is credited with founding like the Athens that we know that great. Yeah. Famous Athens. Sometimes he's credited as the father of democracy, even though no. Lord knows he would have never given up his kingship. Yeah. So I don't know who is convinced that he suddenly, you know, invoked democracy, but they like the Athenian people credit Theseus with so much and they did for generations like so when Hadrian was the emperor um, and Rome controlled Greece at that time it was you know some subset of the Roman Empire and Hadrian was obsessed with Greece deeply obsessed loved it went to Athens as much as he could like built mm -hmm. his life around the Greek people yes he is it's fascinating for his love of Greece but when he was in Greece he had this huge building project in Athens like he wanted to make Athens kind of like his in terms of at least the Roman Empire gotcha and he built this arch so it's still there called the Arch of Hadrian and one side of it when you're facing I forget like the directionality of this I'm gonna go mm -hmm. off memory but so there's two like it kind of divides these two sections of the city so you can face it and you'll see the Acropolis in the distance. Right. And then you can go to the other side of the arch and you see the Temple of Olympian Zeus, which was being built for like 600 years, but eventually <laughs> Hadrian finished it. And so it was Hadrian's. And he built a lot of stuff in the same area. So he made it kind of his. On the one side of the arch, it says like, here lies the city of Theseus. Mm -hmm. And on the other side, it says here, like something like here lies the city of Hadrian or something. Oh, where fascinating. He, he divided the two to make one like his Athens, what he had built. And then the other one he named for Theseus, not for Erechtheus or Erechthonius, whichever yeah. of the two snake people actually founded the city. Like, because those guys are from the time when, when Athena and Poseidon had the, right, right, the right. whole like fight to decide who would name it and all this stuff. But no, Theseus is the father of Athens. Like, it's Theseus. And so they revered him in this way that I think is why he gets to be the hero that he is. Like right. it's more propaganda than it is anything else. Yeah. So this is like, I want to read somebody talking about like the propaganda that is Thysian Athens. Yeah. Because it's fascinating to me that this hero who is objectively shitty, like if we can look at this hero and we can say, okay, so like, let's say the top heroes, like, heroes in that sense, like, I'm going to exclude the heroes of the Trojan War because totally, yeah. they're the heroes of one war, but I'm talking, like, the heroes of Greece. So we have Heracles, who did his labors amongst countless other things. Yeah. He saved a lot of people. He did a lot of bad. Heracles yeah. did bad. He did a lot of murders. But a lot of it was also influenced by magic and gods and whatever. Yeah. We have Heracles, who killed all the worst animals, all the monsters, the creatures of the darkest depths of whatever. Mm -hmm. And then we have... Cadmus, who was this like founder of Thebes, and he killed a dragon that needed to be done away with, and that he helps. brought the alphabet over to Greece <laughs> okay. from Phoenicia. He That's gave fantastic. them the alphabet. Yeah. Cadmus is the best. He's my favorite. He is very underrated. And then, and then we have like Perseus. Yeah, Perseus did real heroic things. Like he saved Andromeda. I won't get into Medusa, but he did heroic things he was also the father of like all the people in the peloponnese fun fact so andromeda uh -huh. is ethiopian he saved her from ethiopia she's full-on ethiopian and also is the mother and grandmother and great-grandmother of like all of the top people of oh. ancient greek of how greek cool mythology. is that exactly so the thing that nobody ever like actually lay lays out is basically an ethiopian they're mixed like spawned greece that's so yep. cool I know. It's fascinating. Kind of, yeah. Like, didn't know that. That's fantastic. I know. And then, of course, in, like, art and stuff, she's always, like, lily white. Yeah, of course. And, and like, of course, like, you know, th this huge seafaring nation, you know, everybody was white. And, like, they never, yeah. you know, married people from other places that they went right? to. Nope, never <laughs> once. Like, this, yeah, this seafaring nation on the Mediterranean. Yeah. 
that traded with with the Hittites and the like the Phoenicians before them yeah. and the Egyptians and the Ethiopians and the people they called Libyans, which is like all the rest of Northern Africa. Yeah, exactly. Traded with all of these people. And no yes, intermarriage. But the no. people in Greece were lily white. They look like they're from Greek Scotland. Yeah. <laughs> As if like Greece in general is, is white. Like, I was about to say like Lord. notoriously olive dark skin for right. everybody. <laughs> right. Like, it's kind of really hot and sunny there and there are no goddamn trees Ugh. like <laughs> yeah it's the the level of like modern racism that has been put onto these people who were like were definitely xenophobic oh they yeah. were they were not cool but they did not like think anything about skin color yeah that was not it that didn't was come not into play definition. yeah no it's crazy anyway but yeah so perseus is like a real hero he does all these so like actually traditionally heroic things and they, Theseus is always lined up with like Heracles and Perseus and less so Cadmus because again, underrated, but he's definitely always aside, like beside Heracles and yeah. Perseus amongst these heroes. And you're just like, why? And I think it's all Athens. It's just Athens. Like yeah. they wanted, he, they put him, you know, at the stature that he was at because the thing is too, like Athens became where we get everything. Yeah. You know, so much of what we know about classical Greece is from Athens. Um, all the plays are from Athens. A lot of the early mythology is not, but he, Theseus isn't in the yeah. early mythology. Like Theseus, I don't think he's in Hesiod. Um, or if he is, he's not yeah. the hero that we know later. He's not in the Iliad or the Odyssey. He's, you know, he's not, whereas Heracles is yeah. and Perseus is. Yeah. So it's, yeah, it's just, it's a fascinating thing to think of, like, he's almost, like, retconned yes. into, <laughs> the Greek history. That's phenomenal. That is absolutely fascinating. And they went with a guy who objectively is not heroic by the way that they define heroism it it why would you retcon yourself a really crappy hero like why would you do that to your own pr that's the thing right like that's what i would love to know is kind of like did he like did he exist as a concept of a hero beyond athens and so because he'd killed like the Minotaur specifically, yeah. which is like a quote unquote heroic act, they, you know, retconned him into being theirs and they kind of were just like, whatever, those other things are fine. Yeah. Or yeah, like why why is this objectively bad person the hero yeah. of a city like Athens? Even by their own definitions of what is appropriate and inappropriate mm -hmm. behavior. Um is there any information that you know of of how Theseus like kicked it? Did he just like die of old mm. age or was it like in battle? So that is such a good question. And I actually, that's a good reminder to me that I want to go back to his story yeah. because, okay, the only reason I even have an inkling that there's more to his death than like old age is that, um, the I'm obsessively playing and have been for like six months Assassin's Creed Odyssey, which is awesome. the greatest thing to ever exist in my life or anyone's life, and I'll never get over it. And one of the places you visit is like named for Theseus's death. It's called like it's a cliff, and it's called like Theseus's fall or something. Oh. And so I've been meaning to look into it yeah. because of that specifically. But I am gonna look up how he died because I really hope someone hucked him off a cliff. That would be right. That would just be the only fitting end to Theseus. If someone was just like, "You, sir, need to mind your manners," and then just like full on, just bodily shoved him off of a cliff, hopefully into some rocks below, because he is just monstrous <laughs> in a way that I was just not prepared for. Like again, knowing very little about him aside from just like killing the Minotaur and 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 uh, bouncing and ghosting Ariadne. Um, like I just wasn't expecting there to be like no other redeeming qualities to him whatsoever. It was pure selfishness at all times. And it's just not what I was expecting from a quote unquote Greek hero. And that is why I had you come on for him because <laughs> he is like, so fun to look at objectively and just like go through these things where you're like, what the fuck? He reminds like... me of 
so many of the dudes that we've covered on the show. Like what he did to Ariadne is fully Angel Claire from Tess of the Dirt Profiles, <laughs> where he's just kind of like, you're no longer my ideal woman. So I'm going to like make sure you live a horrible life while I go and marry your sister. Literally. Mm-hmm. Like it's a Astounding. And I don't know if uh, the writers like consciously did that, you know, later on in the Victorian era when they were making all of these truly terrible, reprehensible men. Um, but uh, it seems like they pulled directly from that sort of love them and leave them kind of situation. Yeah, I mean, and and certainly, like they would have all known the story of Theseus. Yeah, with I the mean, classical think about, education. Yeah, yeah, it was so commonplace. Like, I mean, we, we you mentioned it briefly, but um, I was reminded recently that that Hippolyta and Theseus are in Midsummer Night's Dream yeah. as this like happy couple yeah. in Athens, which yeah. is like so weird and gross and like never part of the myth it's interesting that it's hippolyta and not like phaedra or something because like there's the whole line is like i wooed you by the sword and now you're happy to become my wife and everybody's just like couple goals and it's like oh this is really creepy and gross yeah yeah it's yeah it's quite fascinating that that it is hippolyta because there's you can make an argument that it's possible that phaedra and theseus were happy yeah like it's harder to make that argument later when you yeah. get to Hippolytus coming in. Um, but like you could make an argument that Phaedra didn't completely hate her husband in yeah. a way that everyone else did. But that's <laughs> it. Like you can only make that argument for Phaedra. And I wouldn't because I still think like, I mean, also like your sister is, you believe either like dead or missing at his hands. And then yeah. suddenly like he's marrying you and taking you off to Athens. Like that's sketch. I yeah. would be so worried. <laughs> That You know what's really funny, though? Like, Midsummer Night's Dream is one of my absolute favorite plays. Like, it's one of my favorite texts. And what's so funny to me is that, like, Theseus is not the strong one in that relationship in that play. Mm. Theseus is, like, just as petty as um, uh, the Hermione's dad or, you know, the father who's trying to make her marry Demetrius. Mm. Um, And he's just like, yeah, you should do what your father says. And then Hippolyta is just like, but she hates him. Like, why the fuck should she marry this guy? And Hippolyta is kind of the one that, you know, pushes Theseus in the direction of not making these two kids get married. And uh, Mm. I always thought that was really interesting that she's like very gently nudging Theseus. And now knowing more about Theseus, I was just, I'm just like appalled that he would actually be represented in this play by someone with a classical education who fully understood Greek mythology. Um, he would be shown as actually like that weak and easily influenced by someone as as not important as his wife. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that's really interesting because I mean, I mean, but you know, Shakespeare was a smart guy. Yeah, looking at this and thinking like this guy seems really shit. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> like I'm running this play about Athens, so I have to put him in there. But like, mm, you know, maybe yeah. I'll make him a sucker. Yeah, he's a real sucker in the play. It's yeah. very funny. I like that. Yeah. Um, I've, according to, I could only find it quickly on Wikipedia. So who knows? I don't usually ever in a million years yeah. use Wikipedia as a source. But, um, and this checks out with my knowledge of Assassin's Creed Odyssey. Um, but it says that he was k- kicked off a cliff. Yeah. Um, Lycomedes off the island of Skyros through Theseus off a, or no, Lycomedes of the island of Skyros through Theseus off a cliff after he had lost popularity in Athens. I love it. Yeah. It doesn't have a source, though, so now I'm really curious, and I want to find out, like, what primary source talks about that. I need to know. Like, I need to know that someone was just like, hey, no one likes you anymore. Like, Yeah. (laughs) Like, off the cliff. Yeah. That's awesome. That makes me so happy. You have no idea. That's exactly what he deserves. (laughs) Yeah, exactly. Like, the least heroic, like, most anticlimactic. Pettiest to death. (laughs) Yeah, pettiest, exactly. I love just it. Just like petty, just like him. Yep. Motherfucker. I hate him. Like, thank you so much for like inviting me on to talk <laughs> about him because I hate him. I hate him so much. And it makes me he's, so happy. He's just so 
funny in the way that like he's awful yeah yeah like it's just ripe for a conversation exactly like this where we're not talking about any intricacies in greek yeah, mythology we're yeah. just talking about how objectively shit this man was yeah. <laughs> i mean one of the things that i actually struggle with a lot when it comes to greek mythology is just how nuanced you have to be when you're discussing it and just like understanding the ancient world and values and things like that that are just so foreign and removed from us and especially in like a very christian focused like western society and so like that has always been a huge hurdle for me, but Theseus is just an a, a, a cross millennia dick mm-hmm. in a way that I was not anticipating. I was fully expecting to read um, the text about him and just like be like, but surely there was a moment where no, there was surely no moment mm-hmm. where he was ever a good person ever. Yep, that's why he's fun. Yeah, yeah, because he's objectively like I keep using this word because I think it's important because there really is no other like objectively horrific yeah person in Greek mythology like I can make arguments for a lot but Theseus is just like what like why do you like him why and why would what? Athens ever claim him they have well, yeah. so many other people exactly like just literally pick anyone else yeah. make up a guy pull back somebody from you know whatever myth mm-hmm. and make them about athens exactly. like lord fudge it guys like honestly yeah. who's no one's gonna know no one. <laughs> <laughs> yeah it's just oh my gosh it's so entertaining so thank you so much for coming on this to talk shit about Theseus. i loved it thank you I'm so very much <laughs> uh just oh my gosh so much fun well you're good at talking about shit men and and nuances though you do go into Some, nuances on your yeah. show but why don't you tell my listeners more about fuck boys of literature thank you well you've been on it several times so thank I you sure for have. joining me um if you do love live you can hear us discuss jane Eyre and the picture of dorian gray in some back episodes um fuck boys of literature is a comedy podcast about books and the absolute shit people of literature uh if you in If you ever sat through an English class and you felt like you couldn't tell the teacher that you didn't like the book, this is kind of the podcast for you. We talk about all sorts of different toxic people across Mm -hmm. the span of time, Uh, everything from some Greek mythology up until the mid-century writers. It's it's really fun. Uh, We have about 100 or so back episodes available for people to listen to wherever they listen to podcasts. And if you really, really like us, you can become a patron and get future episodes for a buck a month at patreon.com slash fuckboys of lit (laughs) if you also enjoy some witty banter about books you can follow us on twitter and instagram at fuckboys of lit that's b-o-i-s or find links to all sorts of stuff at fuckboys of lit.com Ugh, nerds, thank you all so much for listening. Frankly, this was just a crazy fun way to spend an hour and a half of my life recording this. We just just rambled about how shit he is, and it turned out exactly how I wanted, which was just an absolutely absurd, wild, great time shitting all over the world's shittiest hero who absolutely deserves it because he did absolutely nothing redeeming or good. And anyway, just what a thrill to spend an hour and a half just ranting about Theseus just for the sake of it. No academia, no smarts involved, just looking at what he did and saying, wow, what a fucker. I hope you all enjoyed it. It was really fun. Thank you all so much for listening. Do make sure you check out Fuckboys of Literature. Emily does a great podcast and you are all the best. Ugh, what fun we have nerds with just hating on Theseus. Such a thrill. I am Liv and I love this shit.